So, hello and welcome to lesson 14 of our study of mathematical biology 1. So, in this video, we'll talk about herd immunity. Okay, so in public health system, immunization is usually given as a means of reducing the occurrence of an infectious disease. You know, Anderson and May in 1978 assumed that the effect of immunization transfers the members of the population from the susceptible class to the recovered class and thus reducing the initial number of susceptibles, S0. So we could recall from our SIR model, the total population was divided into three parts. So those who were susceptible, infected and had recovered. So the normal rule is that people here move to this class before moving to that class. So that means that if our S0 is very large, a lot of people will there is probably a lot of people who get infected, right? So what um, immunization does is that it takes people who are susceptible and move them straight into the recovered class without passing through this stage. So if you're able to do this immunization, it helps to reduce the number of what infectives, the number of people being infected. So that's the main concept of immunization, okay? And it helps us to reduce our R0 below unity so how do we derive an expression for the herd immunity so from the SIR model without demographic effects and force of infection we have R0 to be equal to beta S over gamma let's call this equation 1 so we want to immunize a proportion of the population we want to we want them to get vaccinated so we let p be the population subjects who have received vaccine you know the aim of administering vaccine is to reduce r nodes below unity that is one so if You know, we give vaccine to people who are susceptible, right? So, those who are susceptible, if you are giving P of them a vaccine, that means those without vaccine will be 1 minus P, right? And that would be, that will now be the new number of what people who are what susceptible. So, we will place the S naught. In equation one by s naught times one minus p so that's the reason we said we represent s naught in one by what s naught then times one minus p so that's what you can see here and we are trying to make our basic reproductive number less than one right so that's the reason you can find less than one here so when we multiply two by gamma we have beta s naught because now the, the whole of this is the r naught times 1 minus p will be less than gamma dividing through by beta s naught will give us this and trying to you know send p to the right hand side bring gamma over beta s naught left hand side we'll have this right and you know r naught is given by beta s naught over gamma that means gamma over beta s naught will be the reciprocal of what r naught so that means we can represent this by one over what r naught will be the reciprocal that means gamma over beta s naught will be the reciprocal of r naught which is one over r naught so we can represent that here so you get one minus one over r naught less than p all right then 
we can decide to write p first. So if one over if one minus one over r naught is less than p, then p will be greater than one minus one over what r naught, right? Then most of the times this gives us a fraction. So we multiply through by hundred percent to get it in percentage. So we can leave it in this form or express as a percentage. So this is the relation for the head immunity. Okay. So let us take an example and apply what we just did. So consider a disease with beta, which is one over three thousand, and one over gamma is equal to six days, in a population of thousand two hundred members. So suppose the disease conferred immunity on recovered in the infectives. How many members would have to be immunized to avoid an epidemic? So how many members do we have to immunize to avoid an epidemic? Right? So we have a beta, we have a one over gamma. So from the head immunity from life of the proportion of the population to be immunized is given by what? 1 minus 1 over R0. So that means the first thing that we need to compute is our R0. Now our R0 is given by beta S0 over gamma. So in this case, our S0 is I am approximated by the n, right? So that means it's 1200. And our beta was given to 1 over 3000 times S0, which is 1200 over gamma, which is 1 over 6. So computing this will give you 12 over 5, which in decimal you get 2.4. That means our R0 is 2.4, and you can see it is greater than 1. So that means if nothing is done, the disease is going to spread very fast you're going to have an epidemic and it's something that you don't want to happen that's the reason why you want to immunize a proportion of the world population to reduce our outlets by one so that they um, the disease will die out so the proportion of the population to be immunized to avoid an epidemic is one minus one over r naught now r naught is 2.4 so it's one minus 1 over 2.4, which will give us 7 over 12. So that means that if you take the population and you divide them into 12 equal parts, 7 of them should be vaccinated to avoid an epidemic. Okay. So in terms of percentage, we can say 7 over 12 times 100%, which will be 58.33% of the population have to be immunized to avoid an epidemic. So... The total number of inhabitants is 1,200. So that means the number, you know, the 7 over 12 and the 58.33 is just the percentage or the proportion of the population, right? But since we have the population, the number, we can multiply it with 7 over 12 times 1,200. And if you should do that computation, we get 700. So that means that 700 of the members have to be immunize to avoid an epidemic okay so that's the head immunity and how we apply that in mathematical biology right so I and mean, thank you very much i'm Bidu can read off a final year student of mathematics at the crime and Kuma university of science and technology ghana west african please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content thank you